Hello and welcome. So in today's session we're going to look at component one recording. So it's a question I've been getting quite a bit these last few weeks is how I approach this with my year 13 students. And it's quite a complex thing because you really have to kind of push this forward as soon as possible. So we spent a lot of time last year getting them ready. And a lot of people say, well, why, why don't you record it as soon as the briefs become available? And you, and you definitely could, but for my money, the students just aren't quite ready yet. By the time I get to that kind of ju end of June stage, they're not quite ready yet. And I, and I could, but it puts a lot of pressure on them. It puts a lot of pressure on me. So I tend not to do it exactly when they come out. It just gives me a bit more time to prepare. Now, before I get into this, if you like what you're seeing here and you, you enjoy these these videos and you haven't subscribed yet, give us a subscribe, give us a thumbs up, it helps promote the channel and it helps these weekly videos keep coming. So we're going to look at the timetable today, we're going to look at choosing the song and then we're going to look at preparing the students and getting them ready. All of which happens in the year 13, none of which happens in year 12. So let's go and have a little look at this. So here's this year's brief. Um, and as you go through, the one concern that I look at, or the two concerns, firstly is the time limit. So you have to make sure that the song that you choose from the list fits into that three minutes and three and a half minutes. Um, you will have to, in most cases, either cut it down or just kind of work out the sections, and that's absolutely fine. The next thing is making sure that we have the exact instruments and vocals that we need in both columns. And finally, then it's choosing the song. So each year they get published on the 1st of June and you get to choose your song from this particular list and it can be any commercial song that they've recorded that's available on CD. So a lot of people are saying they're going to do a Maroon 5 song. Um, Taylor Swift seems to be, to be a good one. Um, it'd be really great to hear which one you guys have decided to do, see if there's any kind of ones that, that you kind of, you think might be quite good. So once you've chosen your song, and what I would definitely say, especially if this is your first year, I would definitely say just stick to one song. Now the students don't have to play in this song, they only have to record it. It's really important that the student is in full control of the recording session. So they're their whole mission is setting up the recording, setting up the microphones, setting up everything that goes on with the recording session. And and also maybe just kind of getting the best out of the performers. That's their side. They don't have to worry about performing in it. So you are allowed to bring in musicians. Is What we tend to do is either use um, local musicians from around the area or we use um, music teachers or or students from the music department, depending what you've got available. But because the students don't have to be involved in the actual, you know, making the song, it does make it a lot easier and the students focus completely on the recording session. So what I tend to do is just get one song from this list and then give it to the band or give it to the band leader and get them to prepare it. Before I can even do that, though, you have to make sure the structure is correct and you have to tell them actually it has to fit in to this time constraint. So here's the, here's the structure. And I just give them a lead sheet just to kind of work from, which really helps. So once you've got the structure down and you've given your song to the band, and remember, if this is your first year, you're probably just going to want to do one song and get each student to set up and record the session for that song. And that's absolutely fine. They're not allowed to share recordings. So don't, whatever you do, and they'll try and convince you, oh, sir, but I can just use so and so and so. No, you have to be in complete control of setting up everything. So, you know, you'll get heavily penalised if if the examiner finds out that you've you've used them and they'll start scrutinizing everything. So it's okay to use one song, but the student has to record it for themselves. This is also the same for AS. The AS students have a completely different list and they have a completely different time. So if, you're, if you are doing the AS, it's two to two and a half minutes and these are your instruments that you can use. And the list for this year is slightly different and, and I would argue that they've got a really good list this year. I've, I've had a few people come back to me and say they're doing Ed Sheeran and, and I mean they're happy as Larry with that which is, is brilliant. So finally the timetable. What I get, what I do in term one is obviously I get, I find out which song I'm going to do, make sure I'm happy with that. Then I work out the structure and the key and make sure it fits the requirements. 
After that, like I said before, I give it to the, the band leader or the band to start preparing and make sure they're ready. And if they're if you are paying for the, the band, then, you know, obviously that's a good thing. And, and just let them know, hey, you will be recording this song 16 times or whatever. They're normally fine with that. So then you have to start preparing the students for recording sessions. Just, just go over a lot of the techniques that they're going to be using. Look at some of the advanced recording techniques so you have six weeks just to get them in the zone during the first time i do look at the component one and we start thinking about it but mostly it's all about this recording if i can get the recording done or the bulk of the recording done by the october half term it really frees the rest of my year up um, and it, it kind of allows a bit more area for success you do have to take into consideration that some students will mess up the october half term or they will not be available um, and that can that can cause a bit. So what I tend to do is also book the musicians in for a later date as well, just to kind of take care of all those ones that couldn't make it. Maybe they come in before school, maybe they come in after school. So finally, before before the end of term one, just get the students to set up their their projects and save them. So I always save them component one, song name, and then student name in a folder. Make sure we all know where the folder is, ready to record them and ready to back up. Now, during the October break, I normally, it depends on how many students you have and it depends on, students tend not to want to give up more than one day of their time and, and that can cause a, a bit of an issue. So what I tend to do, depending on how many students I have, I'll say something like, I can probably get between four and five songs done a day. So I say to most students, you know, if I've got 15 students, I'm going to book out three days with the band. So I'm going to say, look, you've, you've literally got an hour to an hour and a half to get to get all these done, set up and recorded. So it's quite a t tight turnaround. Now, if the students are available for three days, the actual better way of doing this is to set up one day. So session one would be drums and bass, but that goes on for the whole day. So you, you can literally just focus in on recording drums and bass. Now, remember that each session you have to pull the pull the microphones back and the students have to set up their own microphones. They're not allowed to borrow the, the last person's microphone. So it really depends on how you do it. Probably the more authentic way of doing it, um, according to the rules, is probably just do it one student at a time. So if you had if you had each student do between one hour, one and a half hours and two hours, so they record drums and bass first, then they record guitar and keyboards, and then they record main and backing vocals in that kind of order. Um, you have to be a bit more flexible. So that, I mean, that is it, but you, you're probably going to have to, depending on how many students you get, you've got, if you've got 15 students, you're probably going to have to give up at least three days, um, which seems a bit of a bind considering it's your time. But to be fair, if you do it over the October, October half time or the October break, the benefits are that there's no students running around the classes. So you, you, you don't get the noise overspill. It's just you and the band and the students recording, which is, is absolutely great. Um, the second is, is you're not finding gaps in their timetables to bring them in or you're not working till ridiculous to time in the evening. Because what tends to happen if you do it during, you know, during the term time is you have to do it after school. So you end up staying from about, you know, one o'clock or sorry, 3.30 until about five or six o'clock, you know, and that tends to go on for, for absolutely months. So, I mean, you're more than welcome to do that way. And, and I have done that in the past, but to, for my money, it just proves more aggro than it's worth. Um, but you, then you have to look at the students that can't make those sessions. So I hope that was useful. That's pretty much how I do things. Um, if you have a different way of doing that, it would be great to hear from you. Um, just say, look, you know, Ken, you can do it this way and this works out just fine. It would be, be nice to hear from you on that because at the end of the day, maybe it's not the most perfect way. And it's always a little bit fussy. I've got to be honest, and during the half term, I'll always have at least two or three students say, no, actually, I can't make it then. I'm on holiday or, or I just don't want to come in, which which tends to be the one way, which which causes a massive problem because then you end up giving up your, your evenings and then it gets a bit resentful after that. But... Another way you can do it is come off of timetable. So most students actually get a couple of frees a week, so maybe just find their, their frees. Um, but then it's getting the band together as well at that, at that appropriate time. So, But under no circumstances should you ever record their, their sessions for them. Um, so yeah, getting it done early is going to save you a, a mountain of hassle. And that October half term just... It's worked perfectly. I mean, I've, you can't do it over Christmas. Christmas students will never give up. And the October half term, they're fresh enough that it kind of happens. 
um, and it's easy enough. Another way would be that you take three days out of your own timetable and you get people to cover your own timetable, which some schools are okay with that and some schools just hate it and they'll, they'll, they won't be happy with it. But at the end of the day, this is an examination, so it's no different than an art exam. And if that has to happen, then that, that's the way it has to happen. So you work out a schedule where you come off timetable for three days to, to supervise. And or if you've got an engineer, they can they can sort that slot out. Um, and then you book the band in for those three, three days during the, the school year. The only downside in my particular school is getting the students and getting the staff to, to respect the fact that there's recording sessions going on that early on in the year. So putting up your exam signs and saying that some, you know, some, some still run through and it's a bit of a pain. But if you're lucky enough that you don't have those noise overspills, maybe that could be another way of doing it. But let me know below. Tell me how you you guys get around that, and it'd be it'd be lovely to, lovely to hear from you. And kind of if you've got a better way of doing it, that'd be that'd be awesome. So hope that was useful. Subscribe to the channel. Let us know what you think. Um, if you want me to talk about anything during these sessions, just leave me a comment below, and I'm more than happy to try and well help you out and show you how I do it. And remember, how I do it's not always the most perfect way, but you know we've been doing it a few years now, and we're kind of tweaking every year. So so you know. Hopefully it's okay. Okay, so I'll see you next week, guys.